welcome again to the bigger picture we are now in daniel 12 but before we start we are going to pray our heavenly father we thank you for another opportunity to dig into your word and by your grace and mercy we will pull out treasures of truth that will sanctify us in jesus name amen now our focus text is Daniel 12 verse 4 which says but thou O Daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased now Daniel had been privileged to see all of these visions but a good majority of the visions he wouldn't see in reality because he would die and so from his youth he had rendered to God full service to God alone and he was coming to the end of his life now and so this was like the last vision given and <clears throat> the last part dealt with the, the the time of the end but he would rest and stand in his lot at the end of the days and the part of the book he had written that dealt with the last days of earth's history, history was sealed so question what does it mean that it is sealed well in Isaiah 29 verse 10 to 12 it says for the lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered and the vision of all is become unto you as the, the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he saith i cannot for it is sealed and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he saith i am not learned so what did that verse just tell us that the vision is become unto them as words in a book sealed that no one can read it and verse tell verse 10 tells us why it's because god has poured upon them the spirit of deep sleep so the book wasn't sealed up as, a, as somebody bound it up with a chain and nobody could open it it's because they couldn't understand their lack of understanding meant that the book was as if it was sealed or bound up with a chain and nobody could open it. But the question is, why couldn't they understand it? Why did God give them the spirit of deep sleep? Was it that God purposely didn't want future events concerning the last days to be understood? So they just couldn't understand it. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Obviously, what Daniel had been shown was not secret, for he wrote it in a book. Therefore, according to that verse that we just read in Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, it is revealed and belongs unto us and to our children forever. So why? Couldn't they understand it well in romans 11 verse 7 and 8 it says what then israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded according as it is written god hath given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day now here paul is talking about the same thing Israel is unable to understand which is represented by them receiving the spirit of slumber or as in Isaiah 29 verse 10 says the spirit of deep sleep which means the words that would give them understanding is to them as if it were sealed. Why? What did some seek after but did not obtain according to Romans 11? Well the previous chapter in chapter 10 tells us that they sought righteousness in Romans 10 verse 2 and 3 it says for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God speaking of Israel but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God question why didn't they submit well, when we jump back to chapter 11 in Romans, Paul uses the concept of an engrafted vine and the original vine that is broken off. And it explains in Romans 11 verse 20 that the reason why the original vine is broken off is because of unbelief. And the engrafted vine are there engrafted because they stand 
by faith. That's Romans 11 verse 20. So now when we return back to Daniel 12 verse 4, we're able to grasp the reason for the sealing of the book of the final events at the time of the end. Israel had failed to believe. The great majority could not enter into that spiritual rest in Christ Jesus because of unbelief. And so the words written by Daniel were like a sealed book they couldn't understand. So generations upon generations went by and the closing events to them were a mystery because righteousness to them was by works and not by faith. But at the time of the end, things changed. It says that many run to and fro and knowledge would be increased. So are we talking about uh, an increase in knowledge because of technology or economics or the sciences or things on the political realm? No, that's not why the knowledge increased according to Daniel 12. In Daniel 12 verse 3, it tells us of the wise that shine with brightness. What are they wise with? Well, if you've been following along with us for the past few presentations, you know that the knowledge that they are increased with are the reason why the wise are wise and bright is because they have a knowledge of the holy and who is holy god so the increase of knowledge in the time of the end is an increase in the knowledge of god and his ways in daniel 11 verse 32 and 35 it says and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their god shall be strong and then verse 35 says, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end. Now, verse 35 is interesting because it not only reinforces the idea of the knowledge of the holy, but it also gives us an understanding that those who have a knowledge of the holy will be tried and purged and made white to the time of the end. Now, this is interesting because when you jump back to Daniel 12, verse 10, it says many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Did you hear the similarities of the wording of the two verses? Those that do know their God, which we read in chapter 11, verse 35, are the wise that understand in chapter 12, verse 10. Because it's the same group of people who are purged, tried, and made white. And what did we learn from Romans 10 about why the wise know their God? The reason is because they don't seek after their own righteousness, but God's righteousness by faith. That means when it's talking about the wise in Daniel chapter 11 and 12, and those that do know their God in chapter 11, it means that they were made righteous by faith because they sought after God's righteousness by faith. And when we look at that in view of the dark ages that lasted for 1,260 years, those who were persecuted during that period were persecuted by the papal power that ruled under the premise that a believer must abide by different systems and tenets to gain everlasting life, whether through pilgrimages, indulgences, and various types of penances. It was a system of salvation by works and not only that but in changing god's law which they did they changed the very standard of which we are to identify the righteousness of god that we are to seek after so many who died martyrs died having that faith that did not depend on the various traditions and rites prescribed by the papal doctrines what they did was hold on to their firm confidence of salvation through christ because the just shall live by faith it wasn't man's righteousness they sought after, but whose? God's righteousness that caused them to refuse the authority of the papal power, thus putting their lives on the line. So this 1,260 years, or the Bible sometimes calls it the time, times and the dividing of time, this is what led up to the time of the end. Question, what is the time of the end? Well, for that to answer that, we have to ask ourselves, the end of what? <clears throat> In Daniel 8, verse 17, this is the first time that we see this phrase, the time of the end. It says, 
So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. What vision? Well, remember that in chapter 8 of Daniel, Daniel has a vision of the ram, the he goat, the little horn, and the cleansing of the sanctuary, right? So is it that the time of the end is dealing with everything he saw in that vision? Is the time of the end dealing with <clears throat> the ram, the he goat, the little horn, power, and the cleansing of the sanctuary? No. But how do we know? Well, when we jump to Daniel 8 verse 26, it says, And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Wherefore, shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. It's the part of the vision that dwelt dealt with the evening and the morning that was shut up now this connects that shut up um connects back to daniel 12 verse 4 being the part of the book which is also shut up or sealed so which part of the vision in chapter 8 deals with the evening and morning so we can truly identify what the time of the end is dealing with if it's dealing with the ram the he goat the little horn and the cleansing of the sanctuary what does the evening and morning which part of the vision in Daniel 8 deals with the evening and the morning? And take note, the evening and morning represents a day. That's the clue. The only part of the vision in chapter 8 that deals with day, evening and the morning, is verse 14. Unto 2,300 days, then what? Then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So the time of the end is dealing with the cleansing of the sanctuary now if we remember why does the sanctuary need to be cleansed it needs to be cleansed from all the desolation caused by the transgression and it being trodden down now is it simply talking about the physical sanctuary structure being desolated and trodden down alone no the primary meaning is dealing with the treading down of what the sanctuary represents. And what does the sanctuary represent? We turn over to Psalm 77 verse 13 that says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. The sanctuary message is the lesson book to know God and his righteousness. And it was trampled down. Every truth that it taught would be made into a lie. And what are some of those lies? that were used to trample down the, mess, the sanctuary message. Well, these lies include transubstantiation, sprinkled baptism rather than immersion, keeping the word of God for prelates alone, seeking atonement from man instead of God. All of this and others is the trampling of the sanctuary. And this trampling went all the way through the 1,260 years of the Dark Ages, starting from 538 to 1798. But... Our God never sleeps or slumbers. So even though the enemy is destroying, God's ministering angels, angels work through Protestant leaders like John Wycliffe and Martin Luther and others to start rebuilding the doctrines of Christ and establishing back and building the old waste places of the sanctuary message. So what was the ending? So what was ending? at the time of the end what was ending at the time of the end the treading down but also and more importantly the rebuilding you see because the sanctuary is a lesson book of god and if that lesson book is trampled upon and distorted will it be able to teach the correct lesson no the lesson book with its correct understanding has to be established back so that lesson taught will have its desired effect. By the end of the 1260 period, which ended in 1798, the Protestant Reformation was well and truly rooted in Europe. Bibles could be found in homes, not just chained within a church building. The understanding of the ways of God, even in troublous times, according to Daniel 9, were built again. However, there was one final sanctuary area that had not as yet been restored to its rightful understanding at 1798 to complete the cleansing from all its defilement of truths turned into a lie. What was it? What 
part of the sanctuary by 1798 still hadn't been touched in terms of um, understanding. It was the most holy place with the Ark of the Covenant. And what does the compartment called the most holy place um, deal with? What does the most holy place deal with? We turn to Leviticus 16 verse 2. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not. Listen to this part. For I, speaking of God, will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So this compartment, the most holy place, dealt with the very presence of God the abiding presence of his glory in connection with his law and the covenant of grace through Christ's righteousness. This is the increase of knowledge that the Millerite movement and then the Seventh-day Adventists were privileged to be taught and have as the oracles ministered unto them and then ministered to the world. This era from 1844 is the era of the completion of the rebuilding of the sanctuary message or the time of the end. When this increase of knowledge in the understanding of the way of God represented by the final compartment has had its desired effect, then who will stand up? Michael will stand up. Well, question, what is the desired effect? In Jeremiah 23 verse 6, it says, in his days, in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Then we jump over to Jeremiah 33, verse 16, and it says, In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord, our righteousness. The similarities between the two verses is obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's obvious. But do you notice the differences? Well, in chapter 23, it says that he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. But in chapter 33, it says, she. So question, in what event in our lives does a woman take the same name as a man? In marriage, when the two become one, and this is the day of atonement, that is the result of the cleansing of the sanctuary finally becoming a sanctuary where the full presence of God is revealed. And his presence means, just as in the type, that his law is there, written on the fleshy tables of our hearts. And if the law is written there, which reveals God's righteousness, then what cannot be there? Sin. In Revelation 19, John in verse 7 to 8 hears that the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now when the bride is ready, that means God has a people here on earth who perfectly reflect Jesus. Remember the name she is called is the Lord our righteousness. And name in prophecy represents what? Character. That means God's people will have Christ's character, Christ's mind completely formed within them. They are faithful only to God and depend only on every word that proceeds out of his mouth. When there is living on this earth, that group of people completing the bride's preparation, then Michael stands up to claim his own. But as Michael is preparing to come, as Michael is preparing to come, what is happening here on earth? Well, we already said that, the, that God's people will have Christ's righteousness in mind. So what was the culmination of Christ's experience here on earth? So that's basically asking if we are to have Christ's mind and character for Michael to stand up and for Christ to return, for us to understand what was happening, what is happening on the earth <clears throat> when God has a people with that mind of Christ, then we have to turn to Christ himself as our perfect example and see what was happening in his life at the culmination of his experience here on earth. Well, at Christ's first advent, what happened was that he stirred up the full hatred of Satan to crucify him. And so it is that the righteousness of the wise will stir up the wicked 
that there be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. That's Daniel 12 verse 1. And in Daniel 12 verse 10, it says, and we read this previously, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked, what are they called? Wicked, shall understand. They, shall, they won't understand. Well, when we turn to 1 John 3 verse 12, it says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. The wicked who don't understand are of who? The wicked one. And what do the wicked do that open up a time of trouble? That has and, and why do the wicked um, follow after the wicked one? What happens that opens up a time of trouble that has never been seen before? Well, the verse continues in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. And it uses Cain as an example. But I'm going to start again from the top so you, you see the flow. It says, not as Cain who was of that wicked one <clears throat> and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Or the verse is saying, so why did he kill his brother? It says as the answer, because his own works were evil and his brother righteous. It is Christ's righteousness perfectly formed within his followers that will bring on that great time of trouble. The wicked have rejected the way of God and therefore have not been separated from their sins and the symptoms it brings. And some of the symptoms are hate, violence, and murder. And so they seek to get rid of the faithful. And what are the faithful doing? Agonizing like Jacob as he held on to the angel of the Lord and would not let go. So then, so then the question for us now is, has our knowledge increased? Because true knowledge, as we have learned, is not an increase in information about the Bible. But it is an understanding of the ways of God that turns and creates transformation. For by beholding him, we are to, change, to be changed into the same. In John 8 verse 32, it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, we still have some questions to answer. We're not going to be able to answer them in this presentation. So we have another presentation for Daniel 12 to be done but what question do we need to answer well we need to know what happened in 538 to start the 1260 years and what does that have to do with the 1290 and 1335 that is mentioned right at the end of daniel and so by the grace of god we will come back next time to deal with those questions so what picture do you see forming from daniel 12 verse 4 Blessings.